After all that rigmarole about Evernote, the palaver, the hoo-ha, the kerfuffle, I have gone fully back to basics. I've gone full circle and I kind of feel like a embodiment of this meme. I used to think that Apple Notes was too basic and yet they've just quietly been there all along. And it reminds me of something a girl once told me where I'm pretty sure she was talking about note-taking apps, which is it's not the tool, it's how you use it. So while I've given Evernote a chance, I've just seen them continue their kamikaze mission to bicrappen their product and alienate their customers. We really value and appreciate your suggestions. They are so important to us. The new Evernote. Oh, wow. Ooh. While a lot of people on the Evernote forums and Reddit are continuing to use the legacy version, it's running a risk because one day you could have an operating system upgrade and that's it, your notes are inaccessible. Instead, we need to look at the trajectory of the company. And as far as I'm concerned, that's a ship that we need to jump off as soon as possible. I've never seen anything like it with software, a company that was the industry leader and they've managed to go from that to unusable overnight. So with using Evernote, the combination of the nagware and poor trajectory and the massive lag in being able to access your notes just makes it no longer fit for purpose. And lag is not a quality that you can have in a second brain. If you take a second look at Apple Notes, you'll see that it's more stable and more speedy than a lot of its competitors. And while it's going to be less feature rich than them, that's kind of by design. It's in Apple's interest to move more slowly because they have to maintain some semblance of competition since they own the marketplace. They make more from owning the App Store and the commissions from developers than they would from making iCal and Reminders and Apple Notes into the most feature rich versions that they could be. They've got a couple of trillion in the bank, but it's not really in their interest to do so. The only key things that you would need in a second brain are the ability to remember, to think, and to write. And the supporting functions of that would be capture, storage and retrieval, zero friction navigation, and a structure for your notes. And Apple Notes does this in a no frills and frictionless way, and really frictionlessness, frictionlessness is the key. I used to be a features man, I would love all the bells and whistles and I'd wait for latest app updates to have like this new cool feature. But now if you've seen my productivity series, you'll know that a two second delay that you encounter repeatedly can be enough to fully derail your focus for the day. And that can be really costly. Hello, I'm afraid you can't continue until you spend the next 20 minutes clicking on pictures of buses, traffic lights, and fire hydrants. Oh, no, you missed one. There's one behind the bush. This is why having a Mac and using Alfred are so essential because they minimize any of those micro delays and keep you on target. So how has Apple Notes fared with the migration? Well, using Evernote Legacy, it was really easy to migrate things over. I've got about 5,000 notes in there and it's handling them absolutely seamlessly. There's no delays. Plus you get all the features of scanning, continuity, Apple support and everything else all in one place. It doesn't have some of the advanced kind of think boy features that things like Obsidian and Rome Research have with cross-linking of notes. It's probably coming in a few years, but this year at least we've got quick capture and we've got tags coming to Apple Notes. And that combined with its new collaboration feature really makes it achieve 95% of what you need in a note taking app. And this is kind of the problem with note apps that each offering in the marketplace does certain things really well, but none of them have the complete stack. At some point we will reach the great note-taking app singularity where you have the ultimate note app and mind mapping and thinking tool that has task management and calendar and everything all in one. But until then, what better place to carefully put your delicate eggs than in the basket of Apple? They're not going away anytime soon. There are some big features that Apple Notes doesn't have and if you are fully reliant on these features then you maybe need to look at some alternatives which I can cover in a second. But the main one is the tools for idea cross-pollination, idea sex. And that's where tools like Obsidian and Remnote and things work really well, because they allow you to nest your information and cross-link things and use ideas almost like post-it notes on a table. On a similar note, things like note linking, mapping, advanced tags, spatial compression, and this kind of emergent structure that comes out from lots of note-taking and writing is not something that Apple Notes can offer you or if you need notion style organization with Kanban boards and tables and things, then that's more suited to a kind of collaborative workspace type app. For me, I'm happy to sacrifice all of that 
for speed and frictionlessness, and Apple Notes handles everything that you can throw at it. So your decision criteria really relies on, are there any of those features that are so essential that you need to pick something that suits that best? And if so, pick the app that is strongest at it. And if you're not sure, I'm gonna be recording a full series about this very soon. So we have quick capture and sync, which is the quick note and continuity. And then to be able to retrieve things quickly, luckily someone has come along and made an Alfred workflow to quickly search for your notes. Once you've got that in place, you are absolutely sorted. You can reach into your brain at any point and pull out whatever you need in about three keystrokes. So there's my experience and move into Apple Notes. A couple of things to be aware of is that you want to have as few tools as possible. You don't really want to be switching between multiple apps. So try and pick the one that covers most of the workflow that you'll be using. It's very tempting to try and tap us and try out all of the different ones. But once you've settled on one, don't get FOMO and grass is greener syndrome until you're absolutely sure that it can cover all of your use case because for sanity's sake, you want to have your brain in one place. The other thing is to make sure that you have an exit route if you do want to switch app. So with Apple, there is an app called Exporter, which allows you to export all of your Apple notes somewhere else into Markdown or HTML. And if you're looking for something which is purely evergreen, entirely local files on your hard drive, they don't go anywhere else. And if the apocalypse happens, you still have access to your notes, then have a look at nota.md. This app looks beautiful and this is really their driving philosophy. And also Obsidian. These are apps which are very much based on you having total ownership over your notes and they're much more thinking tools. But again, it depends on your specific use case. I've not mentioned Rome Research here because I still think they're a cult of incels, but that's just my personal bias. And also I'm just bitter because I can't figure out how to use Rome Research. Anyway, I've got so much to say about this, so make sure to stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, and I'm gonna be covering this in a full series on how to build the ultimate second brain, how to pick the perfect note app for you, and how to do note-taking on steroids. In the meantime, have a look at this playlist.